here on TV3 where we are analyzing uh, for this particular segment how smaller parties and uh, other parties rather and independent candidates have fared over the last couple of years at the polls uh, for the presidential elections. But uh, Martin is back his board to walk us through. Uh, so this is Hilal Iman, right? Yes. What's special about Hilal Iman? Well, so we are raising Hilal Iman not from the dead. We are into our conversation today because it was the first time that we had a smaller party, a yeah. smaller in quotes, because we know that Ghana's election cycle has always been dominated by the NDC mm. or the NPP. However, in 92, uh, when we first went to the polls, the PNC, the People's National Convention, then uh, led by uh, Dr. Hila Liman, um, was the only party, apart from NDC, yeah. that polled the most candidates in terms of parliamentary um, representation. Yeah. They had five seats. Since then, it has been a downward spiral. So we are bringing Hila Liman as a rep of the People's National Convention. Mm. He, presidential polls, got 6.7%. Uh, he didn't win. Certainly, the numbers do not feel like he's made it to the Hall of Fame. Yes, and, and, then, <laughs> and coincidentally, his party had the most seats mm. of the smaller parties yeah. at the time. In 92, you would also recall that the NPP boycotted the parliamentary election, so they had no representation at all. And the other parties that participated, the PNC had five, and it is uh, worthy of note. That was the best performance we've had in terms of um, a party that was not NDC or an MPP, mm. but then had some representation in parliament. Let, let, let's look at that slide again. I know Aben has always been str strong on the fact that there's a direct correlation between presidential candidates and their parliamentary candidates they filled. What are you seeing here? Yeah, so, I mean, this is just a reflective of what I've been saying. Mm. Okay, so I think we will come there later when it comes to the independence. Okay. Mm. Okay, and the other polls and other things. Mm. Okay. But what it means is that before, apart from the NPP and the NDC, yeah. before you can do well as a smaller party, mm. you need a certain groundswell yeah. of parliamentary activities that will propel you in getting that national aggregate number that is significant. Mm. If you don't have that, you are not making that impact. Mm. Whether you are a smaller party or you are an independent candidate, yeah. if you don't have parliamentary ground game, I mean, it's not going to, I mean, your numbers are not going to be that much. So if you, if you look at the trend, yeah. for example, in uh, 2004, when Edward Mahama was in, mm. I mean, he did, I think, 1.9 yeah. on the ticket of the PNC. And then Papa Kwesi Indun came in on the uh, CPP, CPP in 2008. He did 1.34. Mm -hmm. 2012, he moved to the uh, PPP. PPP. He didn't have much of a, a ground game. Mm. So he came in on the swell of his national appeal. Yeah. What happened? He had 0.5%. So he had to change tactics. Yeah. Go back to 2016, fill a lot of parliamentary candidates mm. across the nation. And he moved back to 0.9. Yeah. So you can see that now, let's take even Goom uh, exactly. in 2020. And the Goom, by the way, is Ghana Union Movement. Yes, <laughs> I think Christian, I think Andrews yes. or something. Yes. 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 He had about 80, right? 0.8%. Yeah. OK, so the smaller parties, apart from, I think, 2008, beyond 2008, no one has had more than 1%. Mm. Even those with that massive ground game, mm. no one has crossed 1%. Oh, interesting. Yes. yes. So basically what you are saying is that you can't excel no matter what at the presidential elections if you don't have a substantial amount of parliamentary candidates to help you whip up support from the grassroots. Exactly. Without that, you see that those who had, they were doing 0.9, Papa Kwesi in 2016, and then 0 0.8 mm. uh, goom in 2020. Yeah. So with that, even that level of ground swell yeah. of parliamentary support, you are not doing one percent. But even we've seen uh, info analytics put uh, Cheddar at five percent by the polls that they've done, and uh, we know Cheddar is not fielding any any anybody. He's going as an independent candidate. Uh, uh, so, so, I mean, what Global Info Analytics did, and we'll, ref, we'll make, go back to the numbers. Yeah. What his, this particular one was presidential, mm. and the random question of who would you vote for? Yeah. And at the top of the mind of many people, Mahama had 53%, um, Dr. Bamiya had 39%.
and Nana Kwame Bedi Akun had 5.2%. This, uh, per the questions that were asked, had nothing to do with whether they had fielded parliamentary candidates or But the point is that from what Eben has said, we can't expect anybody to be able to even cross the 1% mark if they are not filled in independent candidates. So that already shoots a, a hole in this uh, poll. Analytic poll. Yeah. No, no, so that's why I'm saying that this was just on the fact of, and it's a poll. Yeah. And the reference we have made before this was actual activity of elections. Mm. So we are referencing 92 up until 2020. So those are elections that have actually happened. So we are referencing that. This is a poll, very randomized poll. And so if they had asked them that if a party has parliamentary representation, mm. would you vote for them? And he gets five and above. Then we can say that it actually holds true. But this was just of the men on the paper. If you meet any random Ghanaian and you ask them, who would you vote for? Per Global Info Analytics data, they say that this is the result they were able to pull up. If you are referencing this to smaller parties, mind you, he is not even a political party. Mm. He's just a, um, uh, running as an individual or an independent candidate. So this is just on the face of who would you vote for, random. If we tie it into parliamentary election activities, it's very likely he might not get even up to 1%. Exactly. Based on, point. on, on, on <laughs> Eben's point that he makes. But to the earlier data we we're talking about, this is also those who have gone as independent candidates in time past, in previous elections. Um, in the 2000, so from 92 up until uh, 2008, we've not had any independent candidate. The first time we had an independent candidate in our election nice. was when uh, Kwabne J. Uh, joined the race as an independent candidate. Look at how much he pulled. In 2008 also, we had Ward Brew, who was actually So these are the active. worst performing other parties. Other parties. Other parties. Yes, okay. other parties. And then we had uh, the famous ODK yeah. uh, businessman, Ashanti man, who also got... Uh, but he came in the 2012 elections, mm. and his numbers also clearly did not favor. Even votes he had in the Ashanti region mm. were worse than other regions where he hoped to have uh, participated. Uh, to well, have can we stay that on that slide a little bit? Even, uh, so these are some smaller parties. Um, we are seeing 0.1%, not too good. So from your data, all of these did not fill uh, parliamentary candidates? Even, 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 even if those filled, I mean, mm. the number should be significant enough. Okay. So for example, let's take the 2020 elections. Yeah. Do you know that when you take all the nine parties, the mm. smaller parties plus the independent candidates, yeah. Their performance together, mm. it is still less than the percentage that Goom had. Wow! All of them had 0.5 percent. Mm. The nine, the nine, eight, eight parties plus the independent yeah. had 0.5 percent. Goom alone had 0.8. So mm. it tells you because Goom filled it about, I think, almost 80 parliamentary candidates across the country. The rest. I mean, most of them were doing below 30 and 20. Mm, so that is where the mechanics of the elections come in. Mm. Okay. So now let me touch briefly on uh, the, the, the polls. Okay. And now I'm with Yeah. And, and yeah. what I think mm. is more probable okay. is that because they are independent candidates, yeah. the data shows that from 2008, no independent candidate has crossed more than 0.3%. Mm. It's even worse. Yes. Mm. They've done between 0.07 up to 0.25. Okay. So nobody has even come to 0.5%. Okay. Mm. So to the idea that you can make even beyond 1%, okay, the best case scenario for 2024 is that when you combine all the smaller parties and the independent can candidates together, mm. the upper limit that I think we will be having is 3%, all of them. That is mm. what is the, the most probably likely outcome for 2024. Yeah. Ghana is a very binary state yeah. when it comes to elections. <laughs> they have, you have either MPP or NDC. That's the true. middle has shrunk. So mm. if you look at the third party line, yeah. it is trending down, downwards. downwards. So yeah. that is how 
And so and the hope for these individuals is actually dwindling. We shouldn't expect any better performance. Not much significant. But don't you think uh, times may have changed looking at uh, the advent of social media and especially the numbers they are able to rally around? We saw about 200,000 people show up for Alan Sherman thing. Yeah. Bediako has also done impressively well in the Ashanti region. You don't think that they could do better? No, just just suppose what we have with Papa Kwesindu. Okay. Which of these candidates has a more national brand and campaign strategy than when Papa Kwesindu came into the scene? None. Can you compare? None. And even <laughs> Papa Kwesindu, what percentage did he get? Yeah. So let us put everything in context yeah. and fix it with the historical records mm. yeah. and see whether these numbers can hold over the time horizon. Yeah. They can at least hope for the best till the polls finally on December 7th.